Welcome to another IoT intro video. Today we will talk about the multi-touch sensor MPR121 in IoT Empower. We have set this up for you. This is this multi-touch sensor here, MPR121. And this is an I2C sensor. And so it's wired up to the Vimos D1 Mini via I2C. So you see basically four cables going over there, uh, SDA, SCL, and ground and three volts. Uh, but you see that a lot of cables are going out here. So, and so these are basically the touch sensors you can connect here. And so just for testing in the beginning, we have just connected this one here and we will do our initial tests, just this one. And this is connected to the first uh, output there on the MPR121. So let's see how we can now deal with this in software in IoT Empower. So if you want, you can look at some examples where this is used. So we have here examples and in examples in IoT Knit, you find a touch to key uh, example. And this is actually uh, doing this touch sensor into keyboard presses on the desktop. But we are first just interested here in this setup. And in there, you see you just define this MPR one to one capacitive touch sensor. And I'm also using the onboard LED. So this is exactly what we also have here in our setup file. You see LED and MPR one to one cap. So let's deploy that. So the sensor is connected to my computer to make things easier now. So, and now let's just listen what we get here. So you see that we get a value zero, zero, zero and so on. And now we touch the first sensor. And you see, we're touching the first sensor a couple of times and let's go back and there you see I get a one on the first sensor. So I can try to touch some various sensors just here on the device and you will see some haywire coming in the uh, values that we get touching multiple of these. So that is pretty easy and now we can do some very interesting thing. We can turn these uh, 12 touch signals that we can get here into keystrokes. And we need a little bit of programming for that. And so this part is actually here in the IoT knit um, uh, program that is also in the examples. So we copy that one uh, into our IoT systems. And we have it here in the in class test. And so here's the multi-touch sensor and here I copied the same thing in the run. And so let's now open this run file and take a look at it. So we have here the data uh, of my local MQTT server and uh, then we call the control node uh, multi-touch. And so the interesting thing is this uh, PY input uh, library and this allows you both on, uh, on all uh, operating systems, Linux, Windows, and Mac, to insert keystrokes uh, and simulate keystrokes. So this is this package. I encourage you to read about it. Really cool package to simulate keystrokes. And this way we can actually even program games or we can build a very simple PowerPoint clicker. So I will close this here. And let's look at this again. So I'm just doing some programming ma magic where I map these uh, inputs here, 0, 1, uh, to actually 11 into some specific keystrokes. And these are just uh, labels from the uh, PY, PY input um, uh, for the PY input uh, library. And then I use the magic of IoT Empower to receive these keys, I parse this 11 input, uh, this 12 inputs 
and then uh, I write it out here uh, in, in insert the key press. So let's uh, check this out. Let's run this. So the keyboard injector is started and now we can actually see that the keys are coming through. So I can already just touch now the uh, device here and then you will see that the return is introduced here in the terminal. So let's make that a little bit more interesting. Let's open up our slides. And um, so it's my IoT session and I could build now a simple clicker. And if I touch here, you can see you can move on through all my slides. So as I promised, but we can use that for gaming too and you have already seen in the code. Let's find the code again, which is here. Let's stop this again. And you can see in the code that I have left, right, uh, down, space uh, in here. And as you can see, you can use that for actually playing an old school game. So you can use that to uh, build your own game controller out of aluminum, aluminum foil or out of some metal surfaces. So we have prepared something for you here. And you see the other cables that we connected actually go here to this yeah, like game controller like uh, rigged uh, setup. So this is actually here the fire button. Uh, this is left, this is up, this is right, this is down. So let's first do a simple test uh, and check in a uh, text editor if this works or here in a, uh, this simple browser. Uh, and so as you see, if I touch things for going down, Ah, and I need to run, of course, the injector. So first I have to run the injector again. Then I go somewhere where I can test and parse keyboard commands. So if I go down, see, I can actually go up and down. And um, I can press my Enter key here, and then I go up there. And this way I can actually, um, yeah, now generate keyboard commands. So we just need now a game that actually can do keyboard commands. and. Usually I use the game I programmed myself, uh, McMinus. It's a very old retro style, Pac-Man style um, puzzle game. So let's start this up and play a little bit with our amazing game controller here. So um, I can actually here uh, move up and down here in the menu. I can move to the right. Uh, here to actually, no, this is the wrong one. Yeah, so now I have to, uh, can start the game. Sorry, I need to go here to the right and then start the game. And uh, yeah, and now we can put the menu away and then can't start playing. And uh, the first level is very similar to Pac-Man. So there comes the ghost. I have to, maybe I wait here. Maybe they come. Ooh, it's getting very tight here. Maybe I can escape. Ah, that was so tight. <laughs> but you see, you can actually play with this game controller. Let's stop this here. And let's marvel once more at this great setup. And you see, with a very simple, very cheap controller, you and the right setup, you can connect a lot of things. We have another setup I can quickly show you here on top. but. There's some problems that happen with this. So we also have, let's see if we can see this. So you can actually, if you build it correctly, go so far and build uh, your own aluminum-based game controller. However, you have to be a bit careful because 
these kind of work like big antennas and the capacity might give you some very ghost-like effects that somebody uh, might press this. So I think having smaller connectors is a more successful way of setting it up. So also when we prepared this movie, we had some ghost effects with the bigger one. This is why I highly suggest be a little bit sparser in the way you set up things and you can make a nice piano or nice game controller in an easy way with the MPEG R121. You can also use it for measuring other capacitive uh, situations like water that comes around uh, and uh, is behind something. But I suggest building some small interactive elements in an easy way with it. So you have seen this great uh, game controller that we rigged up here. And uh, at this point, I hope you enjoyed and can only say stay tuned and see you soon again in the IoT Empire. Ciao.